Hello, everybody. Welcome to Galaxy Brains, where that is not the hope of a new NFL season. It's your hope that you can keep your lovely ranch home and its spotless two-car garage out of foreclosure just long enough for Jonathan Taylor to come off the pup list in week five against the Tennessee Titans and make you financially solvent again, Denny. I uh, thought I'd start the year on an uplifting note. Um, that is that is the hope. That's the financial reality of most Americans today. Will Jonathan Taylor be active for week five? Yeah, I'm, I'm ruined. Oh, <laughs> stealing a Tim Robinson shirt. I'm a dead man. Yeah, you've uh, you've been in a bad place since uh, the pup list thing happened. Uh, Denny, I'm a dead man with Jonathan Taylor <laughs> on the pup list for four games to begin the year. But enough about Jonathan Taylor. That's old news. Denny, we will begin the first Galaxy Brains of the regular season with breaking news. And that is Mike McCarthy knows Latin now, question mark. Uh, can you tell the viewers about this? Yeah, uh, he came out the other day and said that he, he has a new uh, a phrase uh, for the 2023 season that he's told the Cowboys players about. Uh, the, the phrase is carpe omnia. Uh, it's a Latin for seize everything, which... Uh, Oh, makes me scared. I mean, a little bit. I mean, I'm a, I'm a little bit frightened by this. Uh, seize the laptops, time. wipe the phones. Right. I mean, yeah, seize, seize everything. Uh, <clears throat> but really, I think what this means, Pat, is that uh, Mike McCarthy had enough time to learn Latin this <laughs> offseason, which then if you, you know, you just have to extrapolate, really. I mean, and that's what we do on, on Galaxy Brains, which means that he has already he had decided back in May or June that Rico Dowdle is going to see 25 touches a game and they're just going to be done with it. So the offense was already set three or four months ago. Okay. And, and they're just going to run this very boring offense with Rico Dowdle at the center. And then from there, he just, he just learned, learned Latin, which you have to respect. You know, these guys are, they're always there in their office till 4 a.m. studying film, you know, whatever. No, uh, McCarthy was learning Latin and going to bed at a decent time. And I respect that. No, that's a horrible sign for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, he was learning Latin, learning to jet ski, learning to lay bricks, uh, became a master gardener, became a welder. Yeah. All, all very practical skills that no one's doing. No one's learning the trades anymore, Denny. No. No one's learning the trades anymore. Uh, and no they one just, learns. No one knows Latin anymore. Yeah. You, you know what they know? They know ball. But he, he said, he said, I don't want to know ball. I want to know Latin. And that makes him very different from, from other NFL coaches. I don't know how that's going to work, you know, for the Cowboys this season. Probably not very well. Um, but hey, they're going to speak. They're going to be speaking so much Latin on the sideline, you won't even believe it. It's going to be even easier to fall asleep now in Cowboys team meetings with Mike McCarthy <laughs> speaking in Latin <laughs> as opposed to English. And you know, Denny, you know, Mike McCarthy is famed for how genuine his embrace of analytics was. Yeah. So I can only assume his embrace of Latin was just as wholehearted. Where you know he went to the Roman. Uh, Wikipedia once and, yeah, <laughs> he streamed part of one Latin mass. Yep. And uh, he played part of one of like those, like, you know, those like strategy role playing games, like command and conquer from the nineties where you would like get an army and like fight another army. He did one of those with the Romans. Right. One time. Um, one one time, time. Exactly. He had his grandson try to teach it to him <laughs> one time. And, and he, he stopped the game after 22 minutes. He got very frustrated and punched through a felt hat. Um, he so he also cool. learned to say the phrase, "Here's how America is like Rome." Yeah, you know? <laughs> yes, he and, did. He did. And, uh, which which is the basis of every other New York Times uh, uh, opinion column. Wait, I, maybe Mike McCarthy. Maybe that's his goal. Maybe he just wants to become a New York Times writer and talk about Rome all day. Yeah, that, I think that makes sense. You know how I know America is in its Roman decline phase, Denny. Oh. You know how we got running backs playing friggin' wide receiver now. Uh, what is this all about in Detroit? Tell the folks about Jameer Gibbs, the number 12 overall pick of the draft, his supposed role for the 2023 season. The excitement uh, of the Lions over Jameer Gibbs, and we, we, we saw them literally, uh, you know, team officials bashing the tables and screaming and hugging each other as if their family members had been just been saved from a well, okay, when they drafted Jameer Gibbs. I think that excitement has now carried over into the regular season uh, to an extent that, uh, you know, maybe a little a little premature. We heard this week that, uh, according to a Lion, longtime Lions beat writer, Tim Twentyman, that Jameer Gibbs may start the season, get this, Pat, not as the team's primary running back, but as their primary downfield receiver. Folks, they didn't draft a running back in the first round. They drafted a receiver. He's And not only receiver, 
the, a deep ball, a deep ball receiver. He's a little five, eight receiver and a uh, running back. And he's going to play receiver. This is breaking news to me. Yeah. They usually at least claim they're going to be like the slot guy, but like you said, they might have him play every position. They might have him play some center. Uh, they might have him play some safety or something. He's just that talented. He's that versatile. It's actually kind of weird. It, it's extending into off the field stuff. This is kind of, I mean, this isn't really feel good news, but they actually had him lay off a janitor of 25 years uh, team man. earlier this week. Uh, they had him tell the entire team, uh, social media team, that they were being replaced by AI. Um, they're using him. They're actually having him like learn AI prompts and do AI prompts. They just think he's so versatile. Uh, they're having him do everything basically with the offense and with like operations. And yeah, right. I, I don't know. He's just a rookie. I don't know if he's really up for all this. Dude. We invited the laid off janitor to come and speak with us on Galaxy Brains, um, but he had not stopped crying. So it, it is, uh, and Jam Jameer Gibbs is is now the janitor for the Lions. It's wrong, I think, and I think that they should just have him play running back. We actually got news on Thursday morning that the Lions had cut a kicker, Riley Patterson, and we'll have Jameer Gibbs kick field goals on Thursday night against against Kansas City. This is very strange, and I and I honestly think they're just too hyped about this guy. They're so little, yeah, you know, out over their skis. And you know, I just said America was in its Rome decline a minute ago, but you know how I know America is still great, Denny. Um, the janitor's pursuing litigation against. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, I was going to say. So yeah, uh, you know, who's pursuing many, many things. Denny Carter is <laughs> Thomas Brady. Uh, <laughs> colloquially, colloquially, I can't say that word ever. I don't know why I try to say it on camera. It's always embarrassing. Um, known as Tom Brady. Uh, was hired this week as a, quote, strategic advisor for Delta Airlines. You may know them as one of the largest airlines in North America and not anything at all to do with football. You know, some, Denny, are finding Brady's off-field endeavors increasingly bizarre, but you think there is a method to TB12's madness as he become, you know, becomes a pilot, becomes an announcer, becomes a stand-up comedian, things of that nature. He's on every other commercial, uh, you know, advertising all sorts some of Some for companies that are even still in business. Unlike he's FTX, do, right? He, he, he's doing he's doing NFL too soon. He's doing my apes, man. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Hey, listen, uh, you, oh, I mean Brady Dolan. Sorry, Brady is trying desperately to stay busy, and you know he's he's a busy guy. He's a hands-on guy, and really, he'll do anything, anything to stay busy. Including this is by the way, I just just heard this before the show. Uh, he is actually working to create a carbon neutral world by 2025, two years in two years, we're going to have a carbon neutral world. Thanks to Tom Brady. And he's undertaking this massive, uh, a human history changing endeavor, Pat, so that he doesn't take Jimmy Garoppolo's starting job by week three. I, I you know, that, that is a huge trade off and I, I, I have the utmost respect for it. Yeah. Tom Brady's having to physically restrain himself to, from unretiring from for unretiring for the second time in as many off seasons, Denny. Some things are big, like trying to go carbon neutral, or harnessing the power of fusion power for the first time. Something scientists have been working on for something your your boy J. Robert Oppenheimer, I believe, tried to work on. But you know, some of it's just a little more down to earth too. Where Tom Brady knows if he does not rebuild an entire 1967 Mustang Shelby GT engine from scratch, he will be starting for the Miami Dolphins by Halloween. And he just has to do. Whatever it takes from him to not unretire and instantly take you know, some of his friends' jobs, he will do it. But big, small, if you have suggestions, actually, he's encouraged people to tweet at him. Yeah. Um, yeah. So a anything for him not to accidentally become a starting quarterback in the NFL, which obviously he could at, at, at any moment. Uh, and, you know, so we're going to continue to see Brady just do what it takes in order not to unretire for a second time because, folks, uh, I, I'm thinking it's going to happen. This one is the most tenuous, by the way, the most dubious. That's it. He's agreed apparently to a pro bono represent quote SBF uh, and his numerous fraud trials against the federal government of the United States. And Tom Brady knows nothing about law, just no. like he knows absolutely nothing about commercial aviation, but uh, he needs, first off, he wants to get SBF out of the clink. And secondly, yeah, he does not, he does not want to be the starting quarterback for the, uh, the Atlanta Falcons. Right, week seven. Right. I couldn't think. What's another quarterback? I mean, you know, we, you could name probably 15 teams at, at, at this point. I, yeah, I think, you know, he's representing SBF so that 
he can get him out of the clink and then you know maybe get some of his money back i you know and i think that that would make him feel too feel soon. A, a little bit better is it too soon it might be it too is too soon tom brady's trying to stay retired but denny carter and i are just getting going with galaxy brains it's week one we'll be back every week this season uh, for all the latest nfl news and notes keep it locked to rotorworld.com that's denny carter i'm patrick darty thank you for watching